Arena, the on-campus home of the East Carolina Pirates in Greenville, North Carolina, where Connecticut will look to keep their undefeated record in the American Athletic Conference intact. Tip-off coming your way a half hour from now only on SNY. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the UConn Women's Basketball pregame show alongside Carol Walters. I'm Eamon McEnany. UConn coming off a convincing 60-45 to victory over Tennessee on Thursday. Obviously, aside from the yeah. importance of winning a rivalry game of enormous magnitude, how galvanizing was it just not to take it to Tennessee, but to get contributions from up and down the roster? I, I think it was much bigger, right, than the rivalry. We can kind of put that away right now. It meant a lot to this UConn program to come back. It was the tale of two halves, right? Much different team in the second half. They went with it. They rolled with the punches. This is a Tennessee team, very good Tennessee team, that came out swinging first, and you like to see that UConn fought back. That wasn't always the case all season long. So the way they fought, it was a team effort. You like the way uh, individually Olivia Nelson Nadota fought back in the second half. Kristen Williams got going. I mean, the list is on and on. But you could tell as a team that this team came together. They said, you know what? We're not going to lose this game because let me tell you, they were in diapers when that rivalry started, but they still took it to heart. Some of these players were like, you know, this is the program. We're not going to let you down. So they worked collectively as a team from the beginning to the end of the game. When things were rough in the beginning they really work through it and that shows a sign and a maturity for this year's team now from a defensive perspective connecticut forced 27 turnovers held tennessee to under 34 percent shooting why were the huskies so effective on that end of the floor okay well a couple reasons that I think. Olivia Nelson Adota, we saw. She got two quick fouls. She sat on the bench. Now, the thing when you have a big post player in the middle like that is you have your shot blocker, right? You're losing one of your best defensive players. However, if you look on the other side, now you can go athletic. Sometimes when you have the big, you have to go to a zone. They're big in the middle. Now you can go athletic. We all saw what happened when Aubrey Griffin came in the game. It was a different game. Much more athletic, a smaller lineup, which some thought maybe won't work against a big Tennessee team. Well, it paid off. Gino rolled the dice and it sure paid off, but I think part of that aggressiveness on defense, I mean, they just came out with a different energy about themselves, but I think part of it was due to a small lineup. They were able to press all over the court, and they were more aggressive, kind of getting in people's faces, denying, so it was a little different of a game, and it, it worked. And Conne Connecticut's offense has been at its best when they're turning defense into yes. offense. They struggled to do that at times this season, but certainly not against Tennessee. The Huskies scoring 21 of their 60 points on the break. How did they find the extra gear in transition? Oh, <laughs> again, that kind of goes back to the athleticism and Gino giving roles to each player. When they go into a game, it's not necessarily who we playing against. It's we're going to set individual goals. We put them on the board and let's see if we can get it done. Rebounding was a huge factor in this game, especially also offensively and starting the break, right? We see their defense lead to offense, and they were able to get out in denial and really trap things, and they look up the floor so well. You just kind of felt a team chemistry about them that you haven't felt. It was more individual things. Well, they played like a team. They defended like a team. They got that energy going and went down the court. Now, Eamon, in the past, that's been their bread and butter. I mean, UConn scores. Their defense leads to offense. But today, like... Last night was really a breakout game for that, really using each other, and that started with the athleticism and the defense, and they just their confidence rolled from there. You mentioned these players were in diapers when this rivalry started. <laughs> Did you notice that all of a sudden, like it took them a while, and they started to, were able to feed off the atmosphere, yes. and the intensity of the rivalry? Yeah, and that's the other thing. I thought the atmosphere was at their best. So not only were the UConn women at their best, I think the environment they fed off that, and they also know. You know, we said it before. They know what's at stake. There's so much respect for the people that have come before them they don't want to ruin it right they wanted to carry on they did a great job carrying on the tradition but there was definitely a lot of energy and the th thing that's great about this team it showed the maturity like i said that energy wasn't there right away but they picked it up and the rest of the game that energy was there all right as kara mentioned one of the deciding factors in connecticut's win over tennessee was a breakout performance from aubrey griffin as we take a look at the numbers presented by town fair tire 13 points and seven rebounds for the freshman and the hall of fame head coach gino oriema spoke about her night after the win on Thursday. It seemed like there for a while, every rebound she had a hand on it, every defensive possession she had a hand on it. Um, she's got a lot to offer, you know. Um, it's funny because uh, at some point during the game, maybe before at halftime, I said to CD, I said, CD, we got to really get her ready for the NCAA tournament because we're going to need her. I mean, we got to get her you know, in her comfort zone before the NCAA tournament. So we got a, a month or so to do that. But she was amazing today. 
I would say she was the difference in the game. Kara, you heard Gino there talk about how this team will need her down the stretch. So how far did Thursday's game go in preparing her for meaningful games in the postseason? I, I think it's huge for her confidence, right? Here's a freshman class that I think was a little slow to catch on as far as having that confidence. She had a good game against Seton Hall, but ever since then, she's been up and down. Now, this kind of solidifies, like, welcome to college basketball, Audrey Griffin. I mean, she did a fantastic job. People know her name now, but it was more a confidence thing, and you saw the confidence not only in herself, but that Gino has for her. So going down the line in the NCAA tournament, that's going to be a huge deal for getting her in games. Now she just needs minutes. You see what she can do. And it's not just her athleticism. There were plays that I saw that she read the defense really well, especially on some one-on-one -on -one plays when she got to the basket. So, so many things about this game gave her confidence, and Gino's right. Now he's earned her trust, and now you just have to get her in games to get her that experience. But we know how athletic she is. Now can she develop as an overall basketball player? Now, that's the key because you mentioned that Seton Hall game so obviously the ability and the athleticism is there she's a top-notch recruit she has great pedigree what's the biggest adjustment she has to make to be more consistent and also be more ready to play against college competition well uh, honestly that all starts with the mental aspect and practicing and Gino has said this group has not practiced that at a consistent level and he gets frustrated and they need to buy into the system and the culture at UConn and I think they're starting to get it the light bulb has gone on and she needs to understand it's not all about scoring it's about setting screens. Gino gave her a list, right? He said, go in and focus on, you know, setting screens, getting rebounds, playing defense all over the floor. So you kind of narrow it down for the freshman, right? You got to dumb it down just a little bit and say, do this, this, and this. Okay, coach, focus on those things and go out. Instead of big picture and being scared, focusing on the little things. And I think that's what's give, letting her kind of relax and doing the little things. A little bit of an adjustment yeah. going to set the screens when for your whole career the scenes yeah. have been set for you. <laughs> all right, we now bring in our Marie. Maria Marino into the conversation live from Greenville, North Carolina. And Maria, what else clicked for Aubrey in that win over Tennessee? Well, Eamon, as you guys were pointing out in the studio, Aubrey Griffin is just so athletic. I would definitely say that that is her biggest strength. And so when the game script is such that shots aren't falling and you have to find other ways to be productive, as was the case Thursday against Tennessee, make a play and, and that's something that coaches have been preaching to Aubrey as well as the other freshman Anna Makaron just simplifying things don't worry about trying to run a specific play just play hard you know on on offense um, set screens on defense just trap uh, so Aubrey uh, and Anna were both really focusing on that and, and Aubrey knows that if she's just being gritty and she's just out hustling and, and being physical like she is going Maria, thank you very much. We look forward to hearing from you during the broadcast. As we head for break, we're going to get a look at Aubrey Griffin making her final preparations for this afternoon's game with the Pirates. Double-digit scoring in two straight. She's looking to make it three this afternoon. And when we come back on our pregame show, we'll break down Olivia Nelson Adota's game against the Lady Volunteers and why her second-half response was exactly what Gino was looking for. Stay with us. Back to hoops in the first and second halves on Thursday were like night and day for sophomore Olivia Nelson Adota as we look at the numbers brought to you by PC Richard and Son. Nelson Adota came up big late in the win, and as a result, she had the head coach excited about her potential. The best defensive player on, on the floor is guarding you, the bench. You know, so if you're gonna if you're gonna keep putting yourself on the bench in every big game, like you can't help us. And you know, if you're going to be out on the floor, at least you can help us a little bit. And then you got to, you know, you got to match the intensity of the game. Um, I, I, if you were telling me that we're going to get 30 minutes of that every night from now on with Liv, then we're a whole different team. Then we're a completely different team. So that was a great, like, snippet of what I hope she can do 
going forward. You chuckled when you heard that bench line. You've, been, you've heard that message once or twice before. Nelson Adota, a non-factor for the first half and for much of the third quarter as well, but she turned it on late. What impressed you the most about the way she responded late against Tennessee? Let's start with same script, different cast, right? <laughs> That's pretty much what goes on there. Uh, Gina Oriama, please, as you can see, as far as her maturity, needing to see that every night is what he wants, but I thought it was actually a really good game for Liv, mentally. Okay, she gets benched the whole second quarter. Gino decides to go to the small lineup uh, in, in the second half, which we haven't seen. And she sat there and she could have gone one or two ways. In the Baylor game, didn't go so well for her. She did not respond. In this game, she responded with eight points in the fourth quarter. So you saw a maturity even from just that big game at Baylor to another big game at Tennessee. So he needs her in these big game situations. Now we talked about UConn kind of struggling this season. Hey, maybe it's a good thing because down the Line, if they're in another big game, Olivia Nelson Adota knows how to respond, knows what's needed of her. Everyone's going to have bad days, right? So if she learns how to get out of that funk, that's more important. That's a great lesson that she learned. Thankfully, they won while her learning that lesson, but it was a much improved reaction mentally by Olivia Nelson Adota. You mentioned the Baylor game. How difficult is it for a young player to make sure that doesn't spiral and carry over throughout the season? That is that is very difficult. That's why I think Gina was proud of her, the way she responded. I mean, that was a big game, right? That was a big test, and she kind of failed that test, if you were going to say that. Um, so to come back, it, it, it could have gone the other way, right? But those are some of the things that Gino Oriema does. He tries to mentally challenge you so you recover. And in the big games, you, you have to realize your potential. And sometimes Olivia doesn't realize her potential and sometimes not her role. She doesn't have to score 30 points a game, but she has to be a shot blocker and be in there and do something. So it was huge, huge for her to bounce back after the Baylor game. It should be interesting to see if it carries over to the beginning of today's game against East Carolina as we go back down to Greenville to check out Olivia Nelson Adota. She hasn't scored in double digits in consecutive games since the beginning of the calendar year. She'll look to find some consistency in the scoring, scoring column today. We're back in a moment. Chalk up another marquee win for the Huskies as they move to 17-1 on the season with the victory on Thursday. For more on Connecticut, we send it back down to East Carolina with Alan Bestwick and Meg Coma, who have the call on today's game. Got All right, Eamon, so Meg, the other night against Tennessee, Huskies only shot 31% from the floor, but showed a lot of things that were really encouraging besides the outcome. What did you see? Well, I, you know, the effort in the second half, to me, was impressive. They didn't shoot the ball well, down three at the half. They came out in the second half, and they showed a grit and a resolve and a feistiness, attacking the glass, playing tough defense. We haven't seen a lot of that this year. It'll be interesting to see how they build on it. So now you get on a plane, you go on the road to East Carolina in a conference game where you're heavily favored to win and win by a lot. How do you carry, if you're the, the Huskies coaching staff, how do you carry that energy and build on it from Thursday night to today? I mean, that's going to be the key. A big, to, for me to see today, some growth with this team. If this team is going to do what they want to do and be playing in New Orleans in the Final Four, today is a really good test for them to come out, play with energy. We've seen last week some of those road games, uh, a little sluggish to start, and they're going to play against a physical team here in ECU. So I want to see their energy if they come out with that same fight. All right, we'll find out here in just a little bit in Greenville as the Huskies get ready to go, Eamon. All right, guys, thanks a lot. With contributions across the board in that win over Tennessee on Thursday, how much more confident are you in the team's depth as we get closer and closer to the tournament? Well, I, I think huge games <clears throat> on a marker up. Aubrey Griffin, we saw. So you're getting those contributions from the freshman, which is exactly what he's looking for. What I like about Anna Makarat is she came in being a shooter, right? She was one of these European players. Now she's trying to be an overall basketball player. So she had eight rebounds, four assists, and three steals in that Tennessee game. So that shows you, and only five points. I say only because that's not always what's needed of her. It's not how many, it's when. Sometimes she has some clutch three-point shots, but she's finding people on the floor. She's becoming a smarter 
better player. She's understanding it's not all about points. So you're getting those contributions from her. And Aubrey, we see he's gained that trust. She's all over the floor. She's playing defense. It is huge down the line. If he, I mean, Gino never goes that deep, right? But you go seven is typically what he wants to do. And there you have it. If they can keep that consistency. And like Meg said, this is a big game for them to kind of see if they're going to continue on with that. Because again, that would show some maturity in this team as well. The atmosphere this afternoon is not going to be the same as the atmosphere on no. Thursday. But how important <laughs> is it we talk about getting ready for March Madness, for the freshmen to have a game like that at the Hartford XL Center where it's sold out. Yeah. You know, you're going to play South Carolina. How important is it to play those games in big time environments when you get ready for a Sweet 16 game, Elite 8 game, and hopefully the Final Four game? Yeah, I, I, huge. I mean, I hate to say it, but the conference is not necessarily going to always prepare you. Even like you said, and it's not always the teams you're playing against. It's the atmosphere, right? Who gets players there? South Carolina is leading in attendance. I mean, UConn, obviously, but they go to these places and they look around. It's like a high school gym. That's not what they need for the big time. So it's it's genius, obviously, of Gino to not book a cupcake schedule, right? His non-conference schedule is tough. Really important for this team mentally. And like I said before, I think teams in the past, they haven't had this this adversity to face so now they face adversity against big teams I think it will pay off in the long run in the NCAA tournament all right as we mentioned a big part of Connecticut's depth on a Makarot getting ready for tip off the freshman looking to build on yet another solid performance against the Pirates this afternoon but before we head to break we take a look at UConn's upcoming schedule after two, today's game with the Pirates UConn heads home for an exhibition with the U.S. national team on Monday you could also call that the Connecticut alumni squad then it's three straight in stores against Cincy, Oregon, and Memphis. Stick around. We'll be right back. With her three assists against the Lady Vols on Thursday, Crystal Dangerfield passed Maya Moore on Connecticut's all-time assist leader. She's now eighth all-time with 545 dimes, and she has Pam Weber and Bria Hartley in her sights. There is Crystal Dangerfield with game time quickly approaching down in Greenville. In addition to leading the team in assists and steals per game, Dangerfield is also second on the team in scoring at 15.6 points per game. And you know, Kara, it's tough to imagine where this Connecticut, Connecticut squad would be without Crystal Dangerfield this season. Scoring, assist, defense, it's all there with Crystal. What makes her such a dynamic player? Well, now she is. She's in the high rent district, by the way, with those assists. That's pretty amazing. I don't think people realized how high up the chart she is she has turned into the complete leader she is the point guard and the extension of Gina Oriam on the court Gina Oriam has said in the beginning of the season shoot 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 you're a much better player when you think shot first and I think that's helped her even in the assist column which sounds funny but if you think shot first other things open up that first quarter UConn does not win that Tennessee game without Crystal first eight points of that quarter she steadied the ship and said all right guys you're not getting it done I'll, I'm, I'm here to help out and that and that first quarter there was only one assist five turnovers so it was an individual play they weren't working as a team but crystal kind of kept it all together for this squad kept it within shouting distance 16 to 14 at the end of the quarter even though they weren't shooting well and you just saw a confidence and a leader come out and everyone looked at crystal in the huddles like okay what are we doing what are we doing like and that's what hasn't emerged a leader of this group and you're really seeing crystal do that. You scared me there with that shoot mantra. That's a tough word to say three yeah. times on live TV, but you handled it great. All right, when we come back on our pregame show, we take a look at what Kara wants to see from the Huskies today in their efforts to stretch their win streak to six. We're back in just a moment. Time for a look at today's starting lineup. No different. The same starting five for Gino Oriema that we've become used to this year. Crystal Dangerfield in the starting lineup. Megan Walker, the reigning American Athletic Conference Player of the Week. It should be interesting to see if Makarot and Griffin have earned more playing time with their recent strong play of late. Kara, tip off just a few moments away. What do you want to see from Connecticut today against East Carolina? Okay, well, just I'm just throwing it out there. I don't think they're going to lose, okay? They're not going to lose. Okay, the worst team in the conference. However, this is a trap game, meaning they just came off a big win. Can they keep it going, or do they kind of let their guard down because it's not a good team? This is a team not very good, but they press. They have lots of energy, and they come out pressing. So how is UConn going to handle that and make sure that they don't have a letdown? Do you think he'll expand his bench and give Griffin and Mockerot a little bit more playing time? No doubt. No doubt. They've earned his trust. Not a very good team, so he's not worried about it. It will be interesting to see how much he does use them going forward 
Ford because they have gained that trust from him. So it will be interesting to see. All right, relatively quickly, what's the toughest thing about bouncing back from a game with all that excitement and atmosphere that everyone's talking about to a road game where there might not be much buzz? Uh, it's just hard to do. You keep the same routine, try to stay focused, and he says, do the same thing we did against Tennessee, but consistent for four quarters. All right, that's going to do it for Kara and me, but we'll be back for the halftime show. It is now time for Connecticut women's basketball here on SNY. Let's send it to Alan, Meg, and Maria down in North Carolina. It is the UConn Women's Halftime Report brought to you by your local Ford stores alongside Carol Walters. I'm Eamon McEnany. The Huskies are halfway home to remaining undefeated in conference play as Connecticut leads East Carolina 50-21 to after one half of play. And we heard Gino with Maria Marino at the half talk about how Christian Williams really needed this game. She wasn't shooting it well lately. 28% in the last three games entering this, this game in the first half. 9 of 13 for 21. What was the biggest difference for her? Yeah, only 9 points in that Tennessee game. She won wanted to have a breakout game. I liked her aggressiveness from the beginning. She put it on the deck. She's, she's got one of the quickest first steps in women's basketball. She shot from the outside. I liked her versatility. I like sometimes as a shooter, if you're missing shots, let's start with the inside. Get some confidence, drop down the first shots because you drove to the basket, and then get the outside shot going. And she did a really good job of getting it done with the penetration and also with the three-point shot. And of course, when you're a dual threat, they don't know whether to get up on you or play off you, and you can take advantage of either one when it's working for you. We still have more to do on the Ford Halftime Report. When we return, we take a look to the second half. Plus, we hear from Crystal Dangerfield on the key to a title run this season. Stick with us. Here's a look at the first half stats presented by your local Ford stores. And the Huskies certainly had their shooting stroke for the first 20 minutes of this one. 54% from the field, including 6 of 12 from behind the arc and dominating the glass as well. Out-rebounding East Carolina 29-17. to 17. All Husky so far. We're back with more after this. Here's an updated look at Connecticut's all-time assist leaders presented by your local Ford stores. Crystal Dangerfield with four assists in the first half, so she now has 549 and moves into seventh place along that list. We recently caught up with Dangerfield, and she shared with us what she thinks will be the key to UConn winning another title. First and foremost, it's definitely going to be listening to what the coaches say because um, he pointed out the other day, nobody here on this team has won a championship. Last year, the other two, they had won it. Um, but, of course, they had the help of um, Stewie and all those guys. But this year, it's, it's a clean slate for everybody. Like, nobody's won one. So they're the only, only people on our team that know what it's like to win a championship. So we're going to have to follow their lead. All right, so as we mentioned, passing the key there for the first half for the Huskies. They really moved the ball around well, especially against the press. 16 assists on 20 field goals for the Huskies. They had to break this press. Give ECU a lot of credit. They came out with a lot of energy, pressing, trapping. UConn had to break the press. They got to the middle of the floor. You break a press by passing the basketball well. They did that. They recognized where the openings were, and they get, if you break a press like that, boom, 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 with the passing, it's a layup drill. And as Gino said, you have to attack the press as opposed to be timid. Do you think now they've taken ECU out of that as we'll see if ECU remains aggressive in the second half? That's going to do it for us for now, but of course we're back with the post game. Connecticut basketball, the second half, coming up here on SNY. All right, Alan, thank you very much, and thanks especially for doing the math for me so I don't have to tell you how big the win was, 98-42. to 42. And Kara, so much conversation before this game about would Connecticut be able to build off the momentum and play with the same intensity that it did against Tennessee and certainly that intensity was there at the start of the third quarter as they blew things open with yeah. a 14-0 run. What jumped out to you about how intense they were in building off the momentum? Well, I just feel an energy a team thing. Now, this team's got to win by committee because they don't have one particular person that's going to put on the cape and save the day. I just feel a chemistry and see the team working together and an energy. And there was a slight bit of time early on where East you kind of came out punching but the way UConn is responding to those hits they haven't always done that and I liked how they responded confidently got running got their shots falling I mean this is an ECU team had nothing to lose so they came out pressuring everywhere and UConn handled that pressure but it, more importantly I kind of feel like everyone's getting involved it's not just the big three everyone's making something happen you say shots falling that certainly was the MO for Kristen Williams today she came in slumping struggling in the last three games but 11 of 17 including three threes against East Carolina. What was the difference in her shooting today? Well, good shooters keep shooting, and she's a shooter. 
but shots haven't been falling. So what you have to do is you drive to the basket because she's got one of the quickest first steps. She drives, penetrates the basket, makes a few of the easy ones, and then take it outside for your shooting game. So uh, to her, it's all about confidence. She's gone up and down in the shooting department, but just because you're not shooting doesn't mean you can't do other things. And I think she's matured to the point where she rebounded, she did every other things, she passed the ball, and then the shot flowed. So after she makes a couple, she just took a deep breath and, and she was firing on all cylinders from the inside out so and always and and I think she's learned that it's not always about scoring 30 points now if I can do other things to get people open then my shot's gonna fall right if I can get the ball inside to the post they kick it back out so a lot of things happen um, in order for her to have a great game but her confidence was really important for her to have a game like this all right she doesn't have to score 30 but she comes yep. close with 26 yeah. <laughs> as we take a look at the full game stats presented by People's United Bank and look at the shooting percentage for the Huskies 60% from the field and behind the arc. They dominate the glass, doubling up the Pirates 52 to 26. 17 fast break points as they were really looking to run in this one against East Carolina. Now let's go back down to Greenville, North Carolina and bring in the duo that called the game, Alan Bestwick and Meg Como. And uh, Alan, so much talk about East Carolina pressuring the ball and we heard Coach Oriema talk to Maria about the Huskies ball movement. What was the key to breaking the press and then scoring in transition for the Huskies? Yeah, I'm going to use a, a, probably a little different word than you were expecting on this one, Meg, uh, or Kara and Amon. Adjustment. Remember, the very beginning of this game, the press was giving UConn difficulties at the very start, and they adjusted to it. They got the ball moving. They did what they were supposed to do, what they practiced doing to break that pressure. They had a little trouble at the beginning, but they adjusted, and after that adjustment, they were relentless in dealing with it. Yeah, they got the ball up the floor on the pass instead of dribbling, and... and Kara, as you know, against the press, if you attack it effectively and appropriately, you're going to get wide open layups and wide open threes, and that's what ended up happening here a lot. And, and they had to call it off because it was, UConn was just abusing them. Guys, tonight, bench was huge. 39 points from the bench. Anna Makarat, huge night for her. You even had Evelyn Adebayo with six rebounds. How important is this going to be going forward? Did they need the bench to score these kind of points and make this contribution to win a national championship? Without... <laughs> Yeah, without question, Kara. There's no, there's no way you can continue to only rely on three or four players. They're going to need these guys coming in off the bench, and and I'm just happy for someone like Anna Makarat, you know, who, who Gino talked about it with Maria. She was known as a scorer, and she just struggled so much early. It's it was nice to see her get into a little groove. Uh, and isn't it funny how things that Gino talks to us about end up showing themselves as the season goes on, right? Remember back in November, he told us we'll be a better team in January than we are in December. Remember we talked about the freshmen needing to grow and find ways when your shot isn't falling for other ways to contribute. We've seen that particularly from Aubrey Griffin. And then for this team to get where they eventually want to go, they were going to need more people than just those four. And here we are as we get to late January now beginning to see more than just those four contribute. And a game like this where they, they have such a big lead is an opportunity for the team to work on that with those different combinations of people on the floor. And, and it's a very productive exercise, I thought. All right, Alan and Meg, great stuff. Thanks for joining us. Uh, safe trip home, and we'll see you Thursday night as the Huskies take on the Bearcats here on SNY. And we've been talking about Anna Makarat and her contributions, a career-high 24-8 three-pointers. How was she able to get open looks all game long? Well, let me start with, I'm big on body language, okay? And you can just see her take a big sigh of relief and that smile on her face. It's huge, huge that she's gotten the confidence. She's a great player, we all know. Okay, she's still 18 years old, but she played professionally, so she's been in big time situations and I like that she's making smart decisions she's a heck of a passer and rebounding the ball well so it's not all about her shooting but she did find her stroke all her points from three-point land today and just a fantastic cut you can see the smile there and the body language that's what I'm talking about right they need that kind of confidence going forward but man she can shoot the three ball and that's an important thing to have for this UConn team what do you see as the difference in that body language she had a big game against Tulsa last week a big game here now how different is that now as opposed to maybe at the beginning of the year when this was so new to her? <laughs> so new and the freshmen don't get it. And I always say, what's it? <clears throat> it is something 
you can't explain. It happens at UConn. You have to pay attention to the details, the diving on loose balls, the buying into the culture at UConn, that sort of thing. So sometimes freshmen have this look on their face like, oh, I don't get it. Like when I played, they just gave me the ball and I did my own thing. Well, now she's getting it. Like you can see that she's understanding that she has to do other things. And she just has a whole, I'm telling you, I can feel it. I can see in her body language and the smiles. And that's all they need is to take a deep breath. They all know how to play basketball. Let's continue to do that. But I got to tell you, Gino's got to be pleased this happened at the right time, right? They've turned the corner at the right time, end of January. This is exactly where he needs them to be. All right, we've talked shooting, we've talked transition offense, but obviously any coaches want to talk about who won the battle on the boards, yes. and they dominated there 52-26. to 26. Who jumped out to you especially is doing good work down low on the glass? I think Aubrey Griffin did a fantastic job. I think Megan Walker, especially early in the game. And what I liked about Megan Walker is she not only rebound, but offensively, she go back up strong. And these are things we hadn't seen from Megan Walker last year. We, we haven't seen her have the put putbacks with the confidence. She had to learn that, you know, and we keep talking about this theme, but there's more to basketball than just shooting. So get the rebound, go in there, get the loose balls. Those are the, the little things that you have to do at UConn. But you see Megan rebounding with confidence. You see, I mean, so many pe people contributed on the battle of the boards and they score points off it and they're able to start their break off of it. If you rebound the basketball and go hard, then then there's more opportunities for you to run that fast break, which they got many of their points in the Tennessee game and today just kicking it up the court. Megan Walker leading the Huskies and rebounding this one with 12. We have just teed off here on the People's United Bank postgame show. Coming up, we'll have highlights of another Connecticut win in the American Athletic Conference. We're going to hear from Kristen Williams, who had a sharp shooting afternoon. And of course, the coach, Gino Uriema, will meet the media. All that and more coming up on the People's United Bank postgame show. As for the action down in Greenville, number three, Connecticut taking on East Carolina. It was Kristen Williams getting the Huskies going on the offensive end. Here she drives baseline and scores on the tough layup. Three minutes later, Williams from downtown buries the three. Then, just over a minute to go in the first, UConn breaking the press with their spacing, and it's Anna Makarat to Williams, who finishes at the rim. 2.8 seconds to go in the first. Megan Walker misses her second free throw, rebounded by ECU and LaShonda Monk from beyond half court. She calls bank and it goes. <laughs> Take another look. The ball is out of her hand before the light goes off and her three-quarters sh court shot goes in as she is all fired up. In the second quarter, Huskies turning defense into offense. Walker would come up with the rebound. Dangerfield, the long pass down court to Williams who finishes and the foul. Defense to offense, a theme throughout for Connecticut in this one. And Kristen Williams does a great job using her body, protecting, finished with that right hand. She said, I'm going to get the foul call to it. Ooh, the little attitude after. Under two minutes to go. UConn up 23. Off the miss. Huskies again in transition. Makarat says, I can do more than shoot. Check out that. Ooh. I like that. Behind the back, they shared the basketball so well. 20 assists on 37 field goals. Less than a minute to go. UConn up 25. Makarot pushing it up ahead to Walker, who pulls up and banks in the mid-range jumper. Walker had a double-double in the first half. In the third quarter, Kara Anna Makarot takes over from beyond the arc. That's where she shot all day long. Behind the three, with confidence, she strokes it. They left her open, and she kept making them pay, and the confidence was oozing for the freshman. Yeah, I mean, it's a great game for her. To, and look at her, calling for the ball, getting that spacing. Woo, nothing but twiggling, tickling the twines. And again, East Carolina gave her, gave her space, and she kept knocking them down. She took 10 shots. They were all three-pointers. She made eight of them. A career-high 24 points off the bench for Anna Makarot. She was feeling it. UConn was feeling it. And the Huskies dominate East Carolina in this one, 98 to 42 is the final. There you see Makarot's afternoon, 24 points, four rebounds. Kristen Williams leads the way with 26 points, and UConn dominates in transition and dominates in the glass. Kristen Williams set the tone in the first half, and afterwards, our Maria Marino caught up with Kristen Williams. Kristen, how important was it for you to come out and just set the tone today? I think it's very important every game. Um, coach has known me about staying aggressive from the start of the game, and I've been trying to do that by getting defensive and offensive rebounds and getting out of transition. Well, what specifically was working for you on offense? What were you seeing? Well, I came out and hit some jump shots that I've been missing the past couple of games, so it felt good to come out and hit a couple. Well, how about your team overall? What are you happy with? I thought we fought hard. At the beginning, we got a little shaky, but we came along together over the course of the game, and we had great energy.
energy and great effort, and we got it going offensively and defensively. You think your team can build on this when you play Team USA on Monday? Absolutely. Uh, Team USA, it's going to be a tough game, but I think we, we did some great stuff there. All right, thank you so much, Kristen. No problem, thank you. You got to love that enthusiastic <laughs> smile about playing against Team USA. Let's just go there for one second. Sure. If, let's say you were a, an undergrad and you were getting ready to play the players it you happens. grew up watching. It right? What's the, yeah. what's the excitement anticipation level like for these <laughs> players? You're excited to play. You have nothing to lose, right? So you're coming out playing almost like ECU did against UConn because you have nothing to lose. But they have been beat. Oregon beat the U.S. national team. So you have nothing to lose, but you want to make sure you represent, right? So you don't get totally killed but you're playing against some of your idols so you're not trying not to be in awe however five of the girls are UConn players so I think the UConn players will be a little more relaxed knowing family is out there you said they have nothing to lose I'm like they still play for Gino I I mean, come on now it's not gonna be a walk in the it's park true. should be an exciting night for women's basketball all right we have much more to get to here on the People's United Bank post game show we're gonna hear from the head coach Gino Oriam and we're gonna have more on the sights and sounds from another UConn victory as the Huskies roll 98 to 42 keep it here The pucks are coming up next, but more on Connecticut women, and it's the player of the game presented by Town Fair Tire. Kristen Williams plays 30 minutes and gets a season-high 26 points, 11 of 17 from the field, five rebounds and four assists, and she certainly set the tone offensively for the Huskies in the first half in this ballgame. Anna Makarot took over in the second half as she had a career-high 24. Williams and Makarot combining for more than half of Connecticut's 98 points in the easy win over East Carolina. For more on the victory, let's go back to down to Greenville and hear from the head coach. It's Gino Oriema. Uh, coach, uh, Anna obviously got mm. off to a really hot start in the second half. What more do you keep seeing from her, just her confidence being able to build and for her to keep, you know, building upon as you guys kind of yeah. get into the tougher games stretch? Um, you know, she had a reputation, um, you know, and. and in Poland when she played um, that she was a terrific shooter you know and just an all-around really good ball player and um, it was taking her a while to kind of get settled and and uh, I think the pressures of playing here and being away from home and you know she's been wanting to do this for so long you know I think she was trying so hard earlier in the season I think she's in a, 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 a really good spot right now she's comfortable uh, her comfort level is exactly where you want it to be. You know, she's she's not rushing anything. She feels good. Um, physically, she feels good. Mentally, she's in a great place. And, um, you know, I'm excited for her because, um, you know, I know this is what she came here for. This is what she's always wanted. And Kristen also, she seemed from the jump that she was just going in with more kind of aggression, just yeah. that score for her, and obviously her shots were falling. What did you, did you say anything <laughs> different, or was she doing anything different today that wasn't really happening um, before? You know, she was really, she was really disappointed after the uh, Tennessee game and that, um, you know, <clears throat> she's a really good shooter. She's a scorer, let's put it that way, you know, and, and and I think she lost a little bit of her aggressiveness in the Tennessee games. And with each shot that didn't go in, I think she got more more upset with herself and more upset with herself, and it just kind of snowballed. And uh, we talked yesterday about, you know, you just got to understand, you, you score points for us. So every time you get the ball, you're looking to attack and score, and don't worry about if it doesn't go in. You know, really great scorers, they don't worry about the ones that didn't go in. They, don't, they just keep going, keep going, keep going. And today, you know, she saw the first couple go in and just kind of, you know, you know, lit a fuse. And, and she's, you know, we get um, we get those kind of we get those kind of nights sometimes, you know, where everything everything seems to work our way. All right, Coach. Um, after a like back and forth, like first quarter where y'all were only up by six, and y'all really took over in the second and the third quarter, like what adjustments did you make to be able to outscore ECU like twenty eight to five and then twenty nine to five in the third? Um, I think it was mostly being um, being able to be more aggressive than they were. They came out to start the game and. Um, the idea being that it was going to 
it was going to be kind of jumbled up kind of a game, you know, that they were going to try to uh, disrupt everything that we were trying to do. And and we, I think, were a little too passive. You know, it's it's an age-old problem. Um, you know, people um, feel like, okay, well, we don't have the talent that Connecticut has, so let's try to disrupt everything that they're doing. And when people are trying to do that, you have to be really aggressive and attack them and make their make their aggressiveness work against them and it took us as you said it took us almost an entire quarter to figure that out but then once we got it going um we settled into a really good rhythm and our defense got better and our offense got better kind of going on that you just played tennessee obviously and then what you have coming up monday that this game was kind of sandwiched between yeah. but getting out in transition there especially in the second quarter is that what kind of got you all going yeah yeah i mean I don't think that you can play. I don't think you can be a really good basketball team if you're going to bring the ball up the floor and the defense is waiting for you all the time, and now you're going to attack them and think that you're going to be a great team. You can't. It's just too hard to score uh, like that for 40 minutes. So you need easy buckets. And the only way you get easy buckets is your defense has got to be really good. You got to rebound the ball really good. And by doing those two things, you know. Uh, you know, uh, ECU was so aggressive on uh, going to the glass a lot of times or, and, and trying to come after you that it, it played against them once we got the ball and made one pass. So we rebound, make a pass, and now we're going off to the races. Get a steal, one pass, and we're off to the races. Um, makes the game easier that way. Otherwise, the game's really hard. All right, so there's Gino Oriema after an easy Connecticut victory over East Carolina. And he said, you know, you have to be ready yeah. when teams try to disrupt you. How did Connecticut yeah. make East Carolina pay for pressing? That was part of the scouting report was there kind of this chaos that they try to create. It's the only way, right? If you can't beat them, beat them up. So you have teams being physical. If you can't beat them, let's make it crazy for them. That's the game plan. And this is a quick, fast-paced game there. But I think UConn handled it well bringing the press. It turns into like a layup drill. At first, they were trapping the ball and it was they were getting corners and it was a little so-so. But once UConn took a deep breath, it was really important that they turned their, you know, great things happen when they break a press like that. And defensively, you saw at the other hand, their defense leads to their offense, which they've done all the time. But this, I think this is a breakout game with their defense um, as far as um, everyone on the same page and chemistry. And, and they need that defense leading to offense if they want to go on in the future. You say chemistry, and that jumps out at you in the box score with 28 assists. What impressed you the most, and how were they able to remain under such composure and move the ball so well? I think as everybody got involved, and I feel like everyone had confidence in everyone else you have games where it's just the big three let's get the ball into their hands but with 39 bench points uh, today they felt comfortable giving the ball to everyone so there was no hesitation when the ball came in it was getting kicked back out when there was penetration in Kristen would penetrate and be able to kick it people were moving into the right spots they were ne where they needed to be but I just feel like this was a trust game like you start uh, feeling like okay the bench is contributing we're, we're gonna take turns now I don't have to do everything and Kristen Williams, it was her game. You know, Crystal was a little quiet today versus the Tennessee game, but that's all right. If they can have more people picking up the slack, they have more options to pass to because they don't hesitate, then that's how things get open. And, and they just worked together really well and had a chemistry about them today. All right, more time for the understudies means obviously less time for the starters. And you look at the box score, 14 minutes for Olivia Nelson Adota. Do you think that's a carryover from uh, Tennessee or is this just not her matchup with them trying to press? It's interesting. It's a little of both. Sometimes the problem as a player, and let me tell you, because I've been there, uh, the problem is you don't know if you're in Chateau de Bow Wow with Gino or if he's just giving the other players a chance to play because, well, that's needed and necessary to get different combinations and people working. So I think Olivia's got to feel a little bit of frustration. Uh, I know I've been in the same position. Uh, I don't. I think he doesn't like when she makes like stupid fouls and bad decisions and that sort of thing but she never really got fluid she didn't get going because of some of the fouls she gets in she hasn't had a fluidity to her game and this doesn't help her her mental confidence hopefully she's getting it together and it won't affect her but you really want her to have some really good games mentally and physically 
I knew it was going to be tough to fill Gary Apple's shoes. I didn't know I was going to have to know French as well. Chateau de Bow Wow. All right. We have more material like that coming up after the break as we'll take a look at what's ahead for the Huskies. And we'll have more on the sights and sounds of Connecticut's 98-42 win over East Carolina. Time for the drive of the game presented by Subaru. Megan Walker with the rebound. She rebounds it to Crystal Dangerfield. The pinpoint pass to Kristen Williams running the floor, and she makes the tough lay in. Take another look. Dangerfield, the long pass, hits Williams in stride, and she finishes. That is the drive of the game presented by Subaru. Time for a look at UConn's upcoming schedule. An exhibition with the women's national team is up next on Monday. Then it's three straight home games in stores against Cincy, Oregon, and Memphis. Then it's back on the road to take on South Carolina in Columbia. UConn's next game on SNY will be on Thursday as the Huskies play host to Cincinnati. Gary Apple will be back in his chair. Carol will be back. They're going to get you set for all the action on the UConn women's basketball pregame show beginning at 630. But before that game, yeah. we've heard him talk about the exhibition against the yeah. Yeah. U.S. Women's National Team. What are you looking forward to to see some of the, the former Connecticut players take on the current team? I've been on both sides of that coin. It exposes a lot of weaknesses, but it's also a great opportunity to learn from the best on that court. Actually, what's more important to me, Eamon, my team, my travel team, is playing at halftime against Rebecca Lobo's travel team. So that's where the story is. You talk about bragging rights. <laughs> that's going to be the most exciting part. All right, that's going to do it for us. Remember, stick it, we'll stick it around here on SNY for some college hockey. But before before we go, here are the sights and sounds of UConn's 98-42 win over East Carolina.